thank you very much for joining the uh, the online demonstration. And we wanted to present the open access compliance check tool, um, or as we uh, as we endearingly call it, the OACCT. Uh, it's a tool we are currently developing at the uh, at the EPFL library, and which serves to to support researchers in their in their publishing efforts. Um, I'd like to briefly mention a few words about why we are doing this, um, because then I think it's, it's a bit better. Uh, you'll understand a bit. Uh, you'll understand it a bit better. So what I don't think I have to explain is, is open access publishing, the why and how. Um, well, not the why, maybe the how. Um, I, I'd say you. I, well, okay. I, I, I assume you're, you're familiar with the basics of open access publishing, and. Um, uh, I just very briefly run through the uh, advantages, maybe the disadvantages of the of this of this new paradigm, because this will lead us directly to uh, to why we are uh, creating this tool. Um, basically, um, so you should, I think you know that we try to well, open access tries to abolish uh, to to abolish the paywalls which are associated with the classical model of publishing. Um, and the idea is to provide free access to academic output. Um, if you want to um, formulate, form, formulate this in a concise way, you could say that if there's public funding, then the results should also be public. Um, um, there are some alternative, um, but it's an alternative mode to subscription models, um, which could potentially reduce publishing costs. If you remember, open access was motivated by the ever increasing uh, subscription costs for the universities and the university libraries. And this is definitely a, um, this is a, 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 the attempt to reverse this trend. And um, finally, uh, another advantage is it gives more licensing offers, more licensing offers uh, to the to the to, sorry to the researchers, um, which means they have more possibilities, for example, to retain their authors' rights if they want to reuse uh, content. They've already published uh, in other contexts. Um, there are a few disadvantages um, to the, at least to the current models we can find on the market, because uh, very often you you will find that they impose embargo periods to your to your to your publishing efforts, which prohibit immediate dissemination of your of your of your, of your papers. Um, then the publishing charges are no longer taken into account by the um, well or the, the the charges themselves are no longer taken into account by the, by the libraries. Before those, uh, those were subscription models. But maybe um, um, now they are now they have to be. Uh, yeah, now they are passed on to the authors. Um, and all of that, I mean, knowing knowing uh, obtaining all this information requires much more detailed no, uh, knowledge about the publish, publishing process. And basically, what you could say that is, the researchers are sort of. In the middle um, of, of uh, two or, or three um, different different groups now. So basically, we have four parties, um, and we have to find publishing conditions that are acceptable to all of them. Um, now that's the first, uh, yeah, that's the first step. Um, basically, um, obtaining knowledge, obtaining more knowledge about the publishing process, which motivated us to, to create this tool. Um, now, if we look at uh, a few offers you could find on the market, um, I made up a few examples which are, I hope, not, which I hope don't appear too contrived. Um, well, we have, for example, um, the interests of a researcher would like to disseminate a peer-reviewed version at, at least minimal cost with minimal embargo, and ideally they would also retain uh, the author's rights. Um, then on the other hand, we have the interests of the funder. Um, who stipulate that the researchers disseminate the peer-reviewed version, um, which creates uh, well, which is much more reliable than just uh, something you put somewhere. Um, they uh, may offer uh, a partial refund of the publishing charges under certain conditions, and um, there's another stipulation. For example, in EPFL, the embargo is uh, must not exceed six months. And um, yeah, as a fourth point, you could say that. Um, an institution would prefer institution referring to yeah, research institutions such as EPFL, ETH, ETH uh, uh, and any other university. They would um, prefer that you publish your research output under an under an open access compliant license, which, for example, could say um, uh, they want you to upload uh, the output to an institutional repository. Um, exactly, for some suitable licenses could be CC BY and Orion's. 
And now we have to compare these, um, these um, the, yeah, the, the wish of the researchers and the um, stipulations of the, of the funders or of the institutions to the actual offers um, that the journals put out there. And now this is the example I was referring about, which I hope is not too contrived. We have, for example, um, the first offer. Um, now you may share the published version. It costs you 3,000 um, yeah, items of your local currency, let's say Swiss francs uh, in APC. Um, there's no embargo attached and you get to have a CC BY license. Um, the second offer would be you get to share the accepted manuscript. There are no APC, but you have to respect an embargo period of 24 months and you only get to have the publisher's license. Um, let's see uh, what the uh, researchers and the institutions may think about the first offer. Um, this looks generally acceptable, um, even though the, uh, the high uh, publishing cost may may hurt the researchers quite a bit. It's not, it's not nice to have to pay that much. And the second offer is actually unacceptable because it would exceed the maximum embargo period uh, demanded by the funders. So um, only, as I said, that the first offer is acceptable um, and yeah, poses a bit of a problem for the researchers because of the APC. Um, so we could, go, we could go on with that, but there, may be, there, there might be another option, uh, enter the publishing agreement. The publishing agreement may be uh, yeah, concluded between um, an institution and uh, a journal. In this case, yeah, let's, let's remain with this journal. And there we see it's basically the same as the first offer, but there is a 20% discount for um, those uh, researchers, for those institutions um, with whom this, this uh, agreement has been, has been concluded. And now this is, um, yeah, this is a bit more acceptable. So I think this would be um, the idea to proceed with that. And now this is, uh, this is crucial. Um, this is the, uh, the actual reason why we decided to develop this tool. Um, you would need to know about this, about these agreements. Uh, you may already be aware of certain agreements because maybe you, yeah, you have some contacts in the, the university library or in other, in other yeah, because of contacts, you may, heard, you may have heard about that. But I think the best thing um, is to establish actually a publishing service platform. Um, and we as the library decided to, to take this option to go, uh, to go forward with this, because this helps us to um, uh, gather all this information and to provide an overview of all these offers, um, and including also publishing agreements. And this is, uh, yeah, as I said, this is the, 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 the principal motivation for that. Um, there are already some platforms um, out there. There is uh, Sherpa Romeo, which is, uh, I think, the most prominent one. Um, there's also um, Publish Open, for example. Um, yeah, there are others. I think Pronos Up and, uh, sorry, Journal Checker. They were launched quite recently. Um, but um, there is. They are not perfect in the sense that you see, well, some are currently inactive, others have launched just recently, they may not have all the data we need. And um, none of these platforms is actually um, really tailored to Swiss institutions. Well, as possible ex exception of the Chronos Hub, um, I'm not that familiar with that tool yet, but um, in, in, in general terms, um, we, um, don't, we couldn't, at least, I think they, they weren't around when we started the, uh, when we started the project, so I think this is, uh, that's another reason. And um, the idea is not, uh, the idea, um, seeing as how none of these platforms uh, are tailored to Swiss institutions, the initial idea was to, um, to adapt an existing open source platform to the Swiss publishing market. This is the very first line, publish open. Um, and, but during the project um, of, uh, yeah, during the project came clear that it would be uh, more convenient to, to start from scratch to build our own platform. And thus, um, um, yeah, this was basically the open access compliance check tool. Um, and basically, well, yeah, I think we can, we can add this to the, so we're currently still in beta testing stage. I will um, briefly um, present the team. Um, I have with me my colleague uh, Alain Borel. Um, then uh, we had also a, a close collaboration with the University of Geneva, who uh, were helping us a lot with, um, with uh, aggregating the data, with uploading the data, uh, with testing. We uh, hired um, a, 
developer who Galupo um, for front end and back end implementation who's done a great job. And yeah, if you if you're interested in the in the funding period in the in the actual working period, um, yeah, there's also a small um, um, bit of information in there. Um, we had to we had to ask for an extension due to the COVID. Uh, um, yeah. Um, yeah, the COVID uh, pandemic. Fortunately, we got it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that more or less describes um, all of it. Maybe just a, a few words about the data sources. I've mentioned um, uh, Sherpa Romeo. Um, so we contacted um, the, the company behind them, which is JISC. Yeah. We were able to uh, obtain the, the, um, their data for the published conditions. So um, what we're actually showing is Sherpa Romeo data. We are also share, uh, showing uh, data from issn.org, um, but then of, of course the, our I would say uh, distinguishing feature is really uh, are really the publishing agreements, and those uh, we uh, try to obtain them from the uh, uh, fellow uh, open access offices within uh, the Swiss universities uh, group. Um, so we still have to do a bit more testing in our tool, but once this is done, we are uh, we'll start to contact them um, to. Yeah, and to and to ask them for for further information on those, and um, yeah, so I think we can uh, say that we try to uh, tailor this to Swiss institutions. I think we we are yeah we haven't fully done yet since we, we still need to inquire about the, the conditions, but uh, we are, we're getting there. Um, we um, are covering now that yeah. Obviously, this is a this is a screenshot of the website which Alain is going to show you in a second. Um, so we're covering uh, Swiss and EU funders. Um, we uh, also show public publication conditions of uh, about ten thousand journals, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so, yeah, I think this is uh, this is a good point to start with our live demo. And uh, yeah, I'll hand over to Alain. Uh, thank you very much. Then how should we do this? Uh, I need to share my, uh, my screen now. Okay. Um, by the way, if there are questions. Um, yeah, there was one uh, one remark on the on the chat. Yes. Where the apparently uh, publish open is uh, alive again, and uh, apparently they have started moving again. So yeah, we definitely need to take a look at it and. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe we will find a, a new convergence with them. Yes. Thank you for the for the comments. Uh, this is very good. All right. Um, then I will stop sharing and let you take over. Thank you. Uh, no, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Um, need to be more generous than that when you share. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this is the the test platform for the system. Yeah, well, we, I think Matthias will give you the link uh, in the chat. So as uh, as we have seen before, uh, we are in order to understand what's possible, required, uh, perhaps forbidden, uh, when it comes to uh, trying to publish in open access, uh, there's really a, a large amount of, uh, of information that is uh, scattered on a number of uh, different websites belonging to uh, to universities, to publishers, to funders. And uh, it's rather difficult to uh, to find them all, especially if you're in a hurry, as uh, people usually are. So we have designed this, uh, this platform with the goal to assemble as much information in one place. Uh, preferably without uh, having too much to maintain ourselves. So we are not establishing a new source of truth uh, for uh, this information, which would make it even more confusing than it is. 
But we, we assemble that and we provide an interface where people can see what's really uh, possible in uh, their specific case. So with, uh, with OACCT, uh, you will have the possibility of entering any combination of, uh, of Swiss uh, research in institution, of uh, funding agency and journal, and see what are the, the open license terms that should be compared with each other in order to take a, an informed decision. So at this point, it's not completely uh, full with the, from the point of view of data. Uh, so we have the, the name of the institutions provided by Swiss universities, of course, that's fairly easy. Uh, we have, I think, a reasonable amount of funders, uh, at least as far as their names are concerned. And uh, we are not quite yet at 10,000 journals, we are still at 1,000. The, the more frequently, uh, let's say, yeah, used, that's a bad word, but the, the ones in which the, the researchers of uh, EPFL and uh, the University of Geneva have uh, published more often in the, uh, in the, in the recent years. So that's the basis for our selection. Uh, obviously, we will uh, increase that, but that was a, let's say a good point to uh, actually start interacting with the system and see whether it gives the answers that, uh, that we expect. So uh, what we end, you can enter any combination of institution, funding agency, and journal. Uh, one out of three, or three, two out of three. So let's see how this goes. So we will start with an institution. Uh, I will, of course, take EPFL because uh, that's the one for which we have the most data at the moment. And I can push check. Okay, so here's the first information. So it has been Probably identified. There are some uh, some facts about the uh, the institution, some identifiers that might be uh, useful later. A link to the website. Okay, that's not so uh, important in general. People already know it, but the link to the repository is uh, an in interesting information in the context of, uh, of open access. And not all uh, researchers from all institutions know, already know that their institution has a um, repository. So it's always a good reminder. And then under that, uh, you have uh, a series of, uh, of options. Uh, on two are shown here, there's also a third one. Uh, and in these sections, you will have a series of uh, of offers and requirements applicable to the published version of uh, the article or the accepted version, so the, the final manuscript uh, that has uh, gone through peer review. And there's also, uh, not here, but uh, we will see it later, the submitted version or uh, preprint. So uh, any version of the manuscript prior to the peer review process. If we take a look at what's inside, we can click on this. And you see here many, many, no, seven, that's not many. Many is 99 plus, it happens in some cases. Uh, you have various options that are applicable to the researchers who would belong to, to EPFL. So we have ordered them um, in, the, in, the, in the following sequence. First, uh, terms that come from uh, some kind of agreement with, uh, with a specific journal or a publisher for some or all of their journals. 
And so you have the, the current transform, so-called transformative agreements with uh, Cambridge University Press, Elsevier, Premier Nature, Taylor and Francis and Wiley. Uh, all of these are not specific to EPFL. Uh, they are also applicable to uh, essentially all members of Swiss universities, but uh, they are applicable for EPFL, so they are displayed here. Then something that is more specific uh, to EPFL, uh, that's the, our gold open access uh, financial support fund. Uh, what does it say? Okay, here you see for all the agreements, it's, it says discount 100%, that is, uh, well, there's no cost for the researcher because, well, it's uh, all taken uh, care of within the internal uh, process of the, of the agreement. Here, it's slightly different. For the, uh, for the Gold Open Access Fund. It, it's uh, working as a refund, so the authors have to pay the article processing charges first, but they will uh, receive a refund of two thirds of, uh, of the APC, provided they uh, select one of these uh, Creative Commons licenses and they should upload the, uh, the, the PDF to the institutional repository with zero months of embargo. Well, of course, if, if they have paid APCs for open access, normally they are allowed to do that. And then there are uh, some uh, more uh, specific final points uh, that uh, are not perhaps uh, easily described in the uh, from the point of view of data modeling, but uh, that, that are important uh, when you want to understand. And then there's the uh, general open access policy of EPFL uh, that says that you should upload to the institutional repository within six months of publication with an embargo of maximum six months. And for the accepted version, that's just the uh, EPFL open access policy. So any one of these two options is acceptable from the point of view of the, of the policy. Now that's really for a, an overview of all things uh, pertaining to EPFL, so that's still a little bit confusing. And uh, well, it helps if the situation becomes more specific. So let's say we pick a journal. I will take nature communications and I check again. Okay, so what do we know about nature communications? Okay, published by Nature Research. Large thing on nature, but it doesn't really matter. It's a gold open access uh, journal. Uh, listed on the directory of open access journals, among other things, so that's good. And so we expect that uh, this information will have some influence on the options that are available, and indeed there are. Uh, with the published versions, there are fewer uh, terms, some difference for the accepted version, and now you see a possibility with the submitted version so let's see what, uh, what it looks like. So we see that there are no longer any agreement in, in, the, in the list because uh, well, nature communications is not covered by uh, any of the transformative agreements uh, that we have. It doesn't really need to be transformed from that point of view, of course. So uh, that's why it's a, a it's not there. Uh, the Gold Open Access Fund is still av available in the, in the toolkit because it's Gold Open Access Journal, so okay, that's right. Uh, the EPFL Open Access Policy uh, is applicable in 
all cases in principle, so it's still there. And we have some information about the journal. Okay, it will cost well, a sizable sum of uh, almost 4,000 uh, British pounds. But okay, you can do this. You have a license specification CC BY. Okay, so it's also in the, the options for the Gold Open Access Fund. So, yeah, that's a good start. The researcher could think that, yeah, we could do that and uh, take advantage of the Open Access Fund. And uh, it will still cost some money, but uh, at least uh, part of that will be covered. And more important uh, from uh, the point of view of our service, the researchers will know that the Gold Open Access Fund is actually applicable for this journal because very often they, uh, they will come to us and ask, okay, I'm publishing in journal of so-and-so, uh, will this be covered? And uh, we'd like to uh, give them the possibility to see that more clearly. For the accepted version, okay, the open access policy of EPFL is still there. There is an option also for the for nature communications, uh, which doesn't cost any money in itself. So one could think that maybe that would be uh, an interesting uh, choice. But uh, of course, in this case, it doesn't really make sense because in order to have an accepted version, you need your article to be accepted, which means that you will have to pay the APC anyway. So that's not uh, really a, a replacement for the, for the published version pathway. And finally, well, okay, for the submitted version, yeah, Nature Communication accepts that uh, there can be a submitted version distributed on, uh, on many possible places. It could be a preprint archive. Uh, okay, well, that could be useful, good to know if you work in a field where preprints are uh, a common uh, way to work. Uh, that means that, okay, you can, for example, have your preprint discussed on archive and this will not be a problem uh, if you publish in Nature Communications later. But that doesn't uh, address the open access policy of EPFL. Okay, now let's see, let's add one more constraint. Uh, we have some funding from the Swiss National Science Foundation. Fortunately, you don't need to know the full name because uh, you have a, a suggestion as you type. Okay, so it's, in, it's, it's here now, so it has been probably recognized. And, okay, you have some more results. So let's see what they could be. You have the Gold Open Access Policy of the Swiss National Science Foundation, uh, which is described here as a 100% discount, because the Swiss National Science Foundation will can agree to pay the full extent of the APC to the publisher in the case of a Gold Open Access Journal. And since we have Nature Communications, which is one here, well, that uh, would be uh, a good thing to, to try and uh, get rid of uh, all these uh, this 4,000 pounds. And then also some more information here. But not uh, not so uh, interesting in, in this case. Now, for comparison, let's see what would happen if we take nature and not nature communications. This will go here. So I'm checking again. Okay, now we have nature, which is not gold open access. And the options have changed again. 
and uh, perhaps not for the better, actually. Uh, okay. There's one important information that's missing here because we haven't uh, entered it into the database yet. But that's the journal policy, which would be uh, an APC of the same order of magnitude as uh, the one for major communications, obviously. But in this case, uh, okay, you're still in principle subject to the open access policy of EPFA, you're still subject to the hybrid open access policy of the Swiss National Foundation, but it's a hybrid journal, so you can't count on any special funding here. So that's really too bad. And perhaps you should consider instead the, uh, the green way uh, in, the, in the jargon of, uh, of open access. I think in the crowd that we have here, I can use a little bit of jargon. And uh, so here you see, okay, maximum, uh, well, six months of an embargo for the journal policy and maximum six months for the policies of EPFL and the SNSF. Okay, so you will be compliant by uh, following these rules. And that's okay for the way it works for searching. And uh, I want to show you just a few more options before we move to the questions you might have. Uh, what can you do with that? Uh, for example, if you think the, the information that you have found is something you want to communicate, perhaps with the co-authors, of your article to see uh, what's, what you think you would like to do. Uh, well, as, you, as soon as you run a search, uh, the URL reflects the current status of, uh, of the interface. And so you can click here and this will uh, copy the the current address into your clipboard, so you can paste it into uh, an email or uh, probably even uh, send it uh, through Twitter if you're on a mobile phone. It should work. I haven't completely tested yet, but it should work. Of course, in some cases, not everything is quite right. So uh, you also have the, the possibility to, to report some uh, inaccuracies or blatant uh, errors, maybe. Uh, you can do that here for the whole result in general, but very often it will be something that is, is just a little detail on one, uh, one results card here, and you can click here and it will prepare the email with, in the subject, all the information that will be important for the, uh, the application administrators to take a look at what you actually meant precisely. Yeah. I hate the way the zoom toolbars always end up in the worst possible place when you do a demo. And finally, just to follow the more uh, technically oriented, uh, we have included uh, as much as possible the documentation in the code itself, and it's visible through the, uh, the interface just like uh, everything else. So the general user help is not yet completely written. Uh, we actually count a lot on uh, user feedback to see what should be written there. The rest is really more technical. So this is uh, the technical information for the front-end part of the interface. And a lot of that comes from the comment on in the, in the code. 
And the same thing for the back end. So the, the application is in two parts. One uh, that runs in your browser, which was, which was what we've seen before. And this is run on, on the server. And it's actually a, a small web service uh, that is used directly by our application, but that we can, in, in principle, allow anybody else to use if they want to do something else with the, with the information that we provide. And with this, I think I've spoken more than enough.